all of that combined made it probably the toughest race that any of them have ever had to do. Why did we choose to start Lewis on the soft tyre? Well, of all the drivers on the grid, Lewis had the most limited options available in terms of his race tyres, and in particular, in terms of the medium. And this was in part due to laps that we did on Friday morning before we had any awareness that there might be an issue with the tyres. Now, the medium that he was gonna have to run was so short on life, it was actually very similar in range to the soft, Given that George had got a very good uh, start with the soft the day before, it also worked very well on the safety car restarts. So we elected to start Lewis on the soft tyre because of that better grip off the line and the fact there was unlikely to be any downside in terms of range. We discussed the start tyre choice with both drivers on Sunday morning and there was always going to be a chance that Lewis on the soft tyre was going to get a better start and overtake George at before turn one. So that was always considered, but they were aware that they were on different strategies. It was important that they didn't lose time racing each other, and that was clear. But we weren't imposing team orders in the race, and what happened at Turn 1 was simply a mistake. Did George's car suffer any damage from the first lap incident other than the puncture? Well, happily, no. The car itself was pretty much unscathed. And you could see that in his race pace. It was a very strong recovery drive, able to go from the very back uh, to fourth place at the chequered flag. What did we think was achievable by George, given that we were put right to the back after that lap one incident? Well, the early predictions were coming in back of the points, but not scoring many points. As the race went on, those predictions got better and better and ultimately were, were indicating that he would finish fourth place. Well, what changed that? Basically, he was able to overtake, so he was able to get through some key cars early on. And also, once he got into free air, we could see that the race pace was actually really good. And that was the thing that allowed him to make up so many places. On top of that, the strategy team did a great job of re-optimizing the race, trying to make the most of a, of a bad situation. And fourth was a great reward for their efforts. What happened to George's pace on the soft tire? Well, the soft was a very fragile tyre and that was why most people avoided it during the race. George's options were limited though because we lost a medium with good mileage on it due to that lap one puncher, so then it was inevitable we were going to have to run the soft. In the early part of the stint, he was managing, so he wasn't really trying to push. Then we decided to go for a fastest lap. And at this point, he's driving a qualifying lap on a tyre that's already up to temperature. That caused damage to the tyre, it started to caused some graining front and rear, and ultimately that was what led to the drop of pace at the end. Did the car perform better than expected in the race, and what learnings can we take into Cota uh, next week? Well, we were expecting the car to work pretty well. We'd had the sprint race anyway to be able to see the pace of the cars, and that was definitely encouraging. The free practice pace had also been strong, so we had a good indication that it was going to work well. This circuit suited our car much more than Suzuka, the previous race, but the big question is, how are we going to go in Austin? Well, that's a very different track. It's an aggressive tarmac, very easy to overheat the tyres, and probably our worry there is going to be the high-speed performance. That's where Red Bull and McLaren look particularly strong, but it's got plenty of low-speed corners, and in Qatar, we were very good in the low speed. So difficult to know exactly where we're gonna stand out, but our goal is to go there and hopefully be fighting for a podium. We had a really good chance of getting both cars on the podium in Qatar, but hopefully we'll be fighting for the podium in Austin. Due to the extreme heat and humidity, it was a very difficult race for the drivers. And what can be done in future to alleviate that? Well. Fundamentally, when, when the air temp is up near body temperature, around 36 degrees, you can blow air at the driver, but it doesn't have the same cooling effect as when the air is a bit lower. And then the humidity added to that makes it very, very difficult for them. There were other factors as well. It's a really tough circuit, so lots of high G cornering, very, very busy, lots of turns. So a lot of physical demands on the body. And then with these restrictions in the stint length, you, you could push the tyres as hard as you like. So the race was really a sequence of qualifying laps for the drivers, so really busy. And all of that combined made it probably the toughest race that 
any of them have ever had to do. Now, what is the real solution to that? Well, next year, the race moves to December. That's a cooler part of the year, and that's probably gonna be the biggest thing that we can do to help.